I have filmed this introduction so many times at this point, I don't even know how to start. So let me just tell you that today we're gonna to be upgrading this bike right here. This was sent to me for free, specifically with the purpose of crossing the European continent. This is the Fafri's F20 Max. And it's fantastic, this bike is great. It's got a big battery, it's got a strong motor, big thick tires, but there's a lot of upgrades that we need to do if we wanna be able to make this thing last the tens of thousands of miles that we wanna go. There's four things that we're gonna be upgrading. The first is the storage. I've got a lot of stuff. I've got clothes, I've got a sleeping bag, a tent, all of the stuff that comes along with camping, we need this bike to be able to carry with us. So we're gonna be upgrading the storage. Second, we're gonna be upgrading the electrical system. We want this battery to be able to charge as fast as possible. We want it to be able to charge with a solar panel. We want it to be able to charge with USB type C. So we're gonna be upgrading the battery. Third thing we're gonna upgrade is the tires. These tires, they're thick, they're big, and they're prone to get flat. So we're gonna be upgrading them so that they get flat less often. And lastly, we're gonna be upgrading the control system right here so they can unlock the speed and we've got a lot more routing controls. Do you see this guy right here? This is a second bike rack. You stick it on the top of the bike rack right there, and this gives you additional storage. But in order to be able to stick this thing on, we need to take this second seat off. The bike, it comes from the manufacturer with this extra cushion so you can carry an extra passenger. We need to take this off. They set this up so that the only way to actually take this off with the screws would be to take the whole bottom wheel off. I'm not about to do that, so we're just gonna rip it off. With the back seat removed, we will take each one of these legs and we will clamp them to the original rack. On the bottom of each one of the legs, you've got this clamping mechanism. Take one half of it, put it around the frame of your bike, put the other half on just like a sandwich, and then tighten the bolts down. This should give you a really strong attachment to the existing frame of the bike, and you'll just do this with each of the four corners. Once you've got all four of the pegs in, you can just take the extra rack and slide it on because these things are hollow. You wanna pull this thing to where it's completely flat and level, and you wanna twist these things in so that everything stays put. Perfect, look at that. We have doubled the amount of storage that we can have. We have one rack on the bottom and we have a second rack on the top right now. Next, we're gonna add a bag to the top of the top rack right there, like that. One of the cool things about this bag, obviously it's a bag so we can stick things in the top of it like this, but also these side pouches, they come undone. We take this and these roll out. So we've got big pannier packs on both sides. First, we're gonna take our tent and we're gonna slide it in here. And then we're gonna take our camping chair and we're gonna slide it on top of the tent. Next, we're gonna take our tent and our tarp and we're gonna put them right here and we're going to use a bungee cord to strap them down on the back. With all of our camping stuff firmly secured here, we're gonna move on to upgrading the seat. The way that this removable battery works is you're supposed to slide the battery up from the back right here, but the design makes it to where you need to literally take the seat out anytime you wanna remove the battery. That doesn't work for me, so we're gonna upgrade the seat to something that's a little bit more usable. Most e-bikes that use this design have a seat post that looks something like this with a latch. So you just push and it'll slide the seat forward. We're gonna take the seat that came with the bike and we're gonna stick it on this guy right here. I got this on Amazon for like 25 bucks. Taking the seat out is pretty simple. You just take this old bolt off and we're gonna transplant the seat post. There we go. Then this guy goes on this seat post. Now the seat post works like this. You pull this up and the seat comes forward and then you can just pop it back. And then we can remove the battery and put the seat back. One of the things you'll notice is that this seat post is actually a little bit too small. This is 30.2 centimeters wide. This is 27 centimeters wide. So what we need to do is we need to take an adapter to make this pole the same size as this one. Again, I got this on Amazon, it was like five bucks. You slide the, the new pole into the adapter and it will make it the same thickness as the thick pole. Here we go, now it's perfect. Now we can slide the seat forward, pull the battery out, put the battery back, and put the seat down. Now that we've got the seat taken care of, let's upgrade the battery itself. The easiest way to upgrade your electrical system is to upgrade the charging speed. This is the charger that came with the bike. This is two amps. This takes 11 hours to charge this battery. You can just go on Amazon and get one, it's four amps. This will take like five hours to charge this battery. This doubles the charging speed. This was like 30 bucks, super easy upgrade. You just wanna make sure that your battery can actually handle it. This says that the highest it can charge is five amps. Four amps is less than that, so this works. I could actually buy a five amp charger. I just didn't know what the charging rate was before I purchased this. So I might upgrade that in the future and actually get a five amp charger. A fast charger like this will be really great if you're stopping in a cafe and you wanna top up your battery. But sometimes you're gonna to wanna to charge your bike while you're actually out in the middle of the mountain. So let's talk about solar charging your battery. You want a solar panel that is 100 watts at the very least, 
but a lot of the 100 watt solar panels out there are really big. You're not gonna be able to fit one of those regular square solar panels on this because that's just not the right configuration for a bike. You want something like this, which folds up really, really tight. Let me show you this guy. This is a 100 watt solar panel and it folds a couple of times. This will be able to fit on your bike when you fold it up, it'll fit basically anywhere, but it still gives you 100 watts. If you look online for tutorials for how to connect a solar panel to your e-bike battery, a lot of the time they will want you to directly connect your solar panel directly to the battery right here. And I don't think that's a good idea because what you're gonna need is something called a solar charge controller. That's like an MPPT solar charge controller. Those cost upwards of like $70. $70 to be able to connect your solar panel directly to your battery. For $30 more, you're able to get a solar generator. This is basically a really big battery with some electrical components to let you connect it directly to your solar panel. You'll connect your solar panel to this and then this guy has outlets. You can literally use this as like a plug. You can use DC, you can use AC. This is so much more convenient for charging your battery than trying to connect your solar panel directly to this. This works when there's sun, when it's raining, because this has a big battery in it. Let me show you how this works. The first option you have with the solar generator like this is actually using the inverter. That's the outlet thing that you're probably used to plugging stuff into. You will connect the solar panel to the solar battery pack. You'll connect your charging brick to this and you'll plug this into your battery. This will work, it will probably give you 200 watts, it'll be really fast. The problem is, is it's not very efficient because the inverter takes a lot of power. It's much better if you go straight from DC to DC to DC. So let's talk about using this USB-C port right here. We want to be able to charge our battery with USB Type-C. I have already installed a basket, a phone holder, and something to hold my GoPro. Next, we're going to install these mirrors on the sides right here. Typically mirrors like this, they've got a clamping mechanism and they've got some like rubber spacers that you can put on to make sure that it'll fit on whatever metallic thing you're clamping this to. There we go, now when we're riding, we can easily see our blind spot. I'm gonna go add the one to this side right now. The next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna deflate the tires and we're gonna fill them up with this slime. What this does is if something punctures the tire, this slime will be inside the tire and it will ooze out and then harden, keeping the tire from going flat. This is like flat tire prevention. First, we've gotta deflate the air. Oh no, I'm spilling it all over myself. Now we connect the tube to the valve stem. These are absolutely massive tires, so I'm using half a bottle for each tire. It says right here my tires need 30 PSI, so I got a tiny little hand pump, which is great because it's portable, but it means that I'm gonna have to do a lot of this like back and forth motion just to get this tire to the right pressure. Okay, we got it up to pressure, it is really taut. Now what we need to do is we need to spin the tire around and get that fluid circulating throughout the inner tube. It is exactly the same process as before. Deflate the tire, pull out the tire stem, fill it with liquid, fill it back up. And then I think we just finish off the bottle. Screw the valve stem back in so the air doesn't leak out. The last one took me about a half hour to pump all the way up. So I imagine this will take another half hour. Okay, so it's late at night. We're just testing everything. Um, I am too nervous to do this during the day because there's so many more cars on the road. So we're just giving this a test run at night. Everything seems to be going pretty well. I don't like how um, heavy the bike is. The bike is a fucking tank. It makes it really hard to stop. These are not hydraulic brakes. The brakes are definitely mechanical. So it takes a hot minute to be able to stop. That won't matter as much when I'm out on the trail, I don't think, but when I'm during, when I'm in the city and there's cars coming out. Okay, I just got the bike home and there's a couple things that I noticed. The first thing that I noticed is that I need to tighten these bolts because the seat keeps moving a little bit. And so does this guy, this moves a little bit. So I'm gonna take some super glue and some thread locker and I'm gonna stick out on each of these joints so that after like 20 minutes, this thing will stay completely still. It's pretty simple. We're just gonna take some super glue and put it on each of these joints so that they don't slide around. On top of filling up the existing inner tubes with slime, I also got two additional spare inner tubes and these are already full of liquid. These are already full of like a slime type liquid. That way if I drive over something really bad like glass and I completely shred the tire, I can just pop a new inner tube on and it's already full of liquid. We just need to find a place to store this because these tires are pretty thick and so the inner tubes are pretty thick themselves. Check it out, we got both of the extra inner tubes to fit right here, which means they don't actually take up any extra space. This was being completely unused. We can still put our tent, our chair, all of our bags, and we have two extra inner tubes. Fantastic. The last thing we're gonna do is we're gonna change this from kilometers per hour into miles per hour, and we're gonna unlock the speed so we can get the bike to go, I think it's up to like 30 miles an hour. It starts off at 25 kilometers an hour. We're gonna take this all the way up to 40. 
Okay, ladies and gentlemen, it's done. It is ready to go hit the road. Let me walk you guys through all of the things that we've done one more time so that you can understand everything that we did to this bike. Let's start from the back. First up, we upgraded the tires with a slime to make sure that they won't pop. We added the second rack right here so we can carry our tent and our chair. We've got the pannier bags on top of that with our inflatable bed and tarp. We've got our sleeping bag strapped onto the top right here. Inside the bag, we've got some regular stuff. Then we upgraded the battery so we can fast charge it. We upgraded the seat. We have a bike lock right here so we can lock the bike up before I like a cafe. I added mirrors to the side. We've got my laptop and whatever strapped to the front. I've got my phone carrier. I've got a little bag here just for holding shit. GoPro. I think we're gonna go hit the road later today.